How's it going guys? Luca from EDM Prod here. So today's a fun one. We're going to be talking about some creative ways in which we can use parallel compression, distortion and other processing techniques. If you're wondering what parallel processing is or how we can use it in some fun and creative ways, stay tuned because we're going to be diving into all of that. And just quickly, if you're looking for some free music production resources, check out the free downloads link in the description. All right, so first things first, what is parallel processing? Well, parallel processing means that you're duplicating the audio that you're wishing to process, and then we're processing that duplicate and then mixing it back in. By doing it this way, we're maintaining all the characteristics of that original sound, and then we're adding a processed version to it. So there's so many different ways we can do this. Let's have a listen and then dive into processing in parallel. Alright, so I've got this drum loop here, sounds like this. If I'm wanting to process this in parallel, all I need to do is make a duplicate copy and then process that duplicate. And there's lots of different ways which, which we can make duplicate copies in Ableton, right? If I wanted to, technically, I could duplicate this whole drums group, go like this, and process this duplicate, and then just mix in from this group as much as we want. That would work. That's technically parallel processing. So we're just making some sort of duplicate. We can, I could also go like this and make an audio track and then record these drums into this audio track and then process that one and mix this one in. It's a little bit more destructive though, so I don't recommend either of those things. Uh, I could also go down here and make a send track. So this is a really common way of doing it and a great way of doing it because we have control over how much we want to send to this track. So up here is where we send the audio to the tracks. In fact, if I switch over to the other view, you can see the send B amount. This is the B return and this is the send B amount and I can send audio in there. And now you'll hear that the audio of the drums actually gets louder because we're sending it in. So you can see it's getting louder. It's because we're duplicating a copy of this audio, sending it to this track, and then this track is sending to the master as well. So there's two, there's two duplicate copies of the drums that are sending to the master. And we can process this track and then mix it in here with this fader. This is a perfectly fine way of doing it and a way that most doors support using send and return tracks or aux tracks or bus tracks or whatever they want to call them. But in fact, for me, it's a little bit disjointed over here and I just want to do parallel processing on the drums. So I'm actually going to delete this return track, go over to the drums group. This is the drums group that I've selected and go into my utilities and grab an audio effect rack. Audio effect racks also allow us to do parallel processing if we hit this show slash hide chainless button. What happens here is let's say I'm just going to grab a utility and drag it on here. You can see a chain is created. What this is doing is the audio is routing from here into the chain and then out the other side of the chain and back into the track. So have a look at the little green bars and where they are located in this audio effect rack. So you can see there's a green bar representing the audio coming in, going through the chain and going out. And if I'm to right click here, I can create a new chain. So now what's happening is the audio is going in and it's being split evenly into each chain and then coming back out as one audio signal. So have a look at how the green bars are split into each chain. So if I'm to mute both of them, then you can hear nothing and then I can unmute them. And they're separate, but they have exact replicas. So this is great way of doing parallel processing. I'm going to rename this chain, the dry chain, and then this one, the parallel. And we're going to start doing parallel processing on this one. I'm going to turn it down and then we're going to start mixing it back in once we have our final result. So the first technique and one of the most common techniques is parallel compression. So I'm going to go over and grab a compressor device, go into my dynamics group and just drag a compressor on here. 
why parallel compression is so useful is because it allows us to get the effects of compressing really hard, that really exaggerated compression feel without compressing the actual audio signal too much. So we're just adding a compressed signal into the original drum sound. We're not compressing the original drum sound. So we don't lose all of that dynamics. In fact, we actually gain extra punch and dynamics. This is great for things like drums and vocals. So let's have a look at this drums group and see how it goes. So the first step with parallel compression is you want it to be quite exaggerated. So I'm gonna turn the ratio of this compressor up quite a bit. Let's go to about 42, right? I'm going to play the drums and bring down the threshold to the point where you can really hear the compression start to occur. So now is the point where we can tweak our settings. So I could make the attack a little bit slower if I want that kick drum punch. I can make the release a little bit faster if I want even more exaggerated kick drum punch. So what I'm really going for is the transients of the kick drums and the snares, but it's a little bit too much now. And what we can do in this case is use EQs to tweak this parallel compression sound. So I'm going to go into my EQs tab here and grab actually a channel EQ. So if I'm to put the channel EQ after the compressor, then what we're, gonna, what we're tweaking here is actually the output of the compressor. When you compress, we actually lose a lot of the low end. So all of the low end out of the kick is pretty much gone. If I wanted more low end back, I could boost it here. Right? If it makes things a little bit too present, I could tame those high ends. So we can put a channel EQ after. We can actually put it before as well. And this will have a different effect because now the EQ is actually changing what the compressor is reacting to. So in this instance, it's pumping a lot and it's actually pumping a little bit too much for my liking. And that's because the kick drum is the loudest element of this drums group. So if I actually take down the low end on an EQ before the compressor, that will make it react to the low end less. So have a look at how it stops pumping as much. If I actually cut the low end out, you can see that now it's not reacting to the kick drum as much. It's not just pumping up and down with the kick drum. And if I turn it off, it's really reacting to the kick drum there. And now it's more reacting to the snares and hats here. So an EQ before changes what it reacts to and an EQ after just tweaks how the output of the compressor and the parallel compression affect sounds. So to really customize it for this drums, I'm going to actually take off this low cut. I want it pumping a little bit. I want that kick drum transient to be punchy, but I don't want it to be pumping so much. So I'm gonna actually bring down the low end a little bit beforehand. Maybe bring up the highs a bit, because I want it to be re reacting more to those snares and hats. So I'm gonna bring the mids up and bring that up a little bit. So now I can really hear the transient of the kick drum and the transient of the snare really being exaggerated. Now in this channel EQ afterwards, I think I'm going to leave the low end as is. I'm gonna boost the mids around where the snare's hitting. That's a good region, so I'm just gonna bring that back a bit. And maybe just boost a little bit of the highs as well. So now all we need to do is unmute here and start to mix this back into the dry signal. So I'm gonna play this and we're gonna to listen to the dry signal. And then I'm gonna start bringing up this slider and mixing in the parallel signal and just try and have a listen for how the kick drum transit becomes a little bit more punchy. So does the snare and the whole thing will become a little bit brighter as well. So have a listen to this effect as I do that.
So the hat's really poking out there now, but also listen to the kick drum and how that changes as I AB this. So that transient is much more punchy now. And also listen to the snare as well. So obviously that is a little bit exaggerated and I wouldn't use it to that degree, but that is the effect and you can dial that into taste. Next, we're going to be talking about how we can use parallel processing to create a more creative sound effect this time. So I have these two notes in this bass line. They sound like this. And then with the parallel processing and parallel compression techniques that I'm about to explain, now it sounds like this. So what's actually happening here is you can hear that the low end is pumping, but the top end is not. And what I've done is I've actually added a sidechain compressor just to the low end, and then I've processed the top end differently. So let's have a look at how we use parallel processing to do this. What I'm gonna do is actually start with an EQ this time. Go into my EQ and grab an EQ8. So this is the territory where we start splitting up bands and processing each band of the frequency spectrum differently now. So I'm gonna go into my EQ here and actually make a cut to where I want to separate the low end from the top end. So let's have a listen. I think I wanna separate it around about here. That seems like just low end for me. And what I'm gonna do is actually highlight this EQ and hit Command G to group it, and then show this chain list again. And I'm gonna, instead of creating a new chain, I'm gonna hit this one and hit Command D to duplicate this chain so they're the exact same. And then all I'm gonna do, it's really simple, is go over to this and just flip it the opposite direction and not touch it. So now if I click on each one, you can see that they're flipped perfectly. And this is separating the low end from the top. So I'm gonna rename this one low end and this tops. And now I can start processing the top and the low end differently. So I'm assuming that we all know how sidechain compression works and I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna add a compressor device that is sidechaining from the kick, getting that pumping feel just for the low end. Got my compressor and let's put the input from the kick and bring this down. Now you can hear that low end is pumping. And now if I, if I unsolo this, you can have a listen. The low end is pumping, but the top of the signal is not. Now we can start processing the top to be a little bit more interesting as well. So now I've just grabbed an amp device and put it after here on this tops chain. You can have a listen to how that sounds. And you can really go crazy with this, experiment with what works, but this amp gives the top end a really nice gritty feel. I'm also going to add a, I think I want a phaser as well. So this phaser device is going to give this a modulated feel to the top end as well. So it's going to be moving around a little bit. Maybe we could try some of these other algorithms. I really like how the doubler sounds on this. So now we have this gritty parallel sidechain feel. Moving on to the next one, we can actually process any effect in parallel as well. So processing an effect in parallel allows us to process the output of just that effect and then blend it in. So I'll show you the outcome of this processing technique and then we can dive into how we set it up. I've got this pad sound. I've actually got this filter on it here. And then I've got this parallel uh, echo device here as well. So this is our dry chain and this is our parallel chain. We can just move that underneath here. And then 
if I turn this on, you can see that this parallel chain goes into this echo device and then I have an EQ after it. And what this EQ is doing is that when I move this filter here, there's no echoing going on until I start to bring up the filter. And we get this really nice filtered echo sound. So this wouldn't work if we did it just in regular processing, serial processing, because we're actually EQing the original sound here as well. So we just get this. So technically what we're doing is we're just EQing the, the sound of the echo, which is a really nice effect. And all you need to do to create this is do the same thing, just add a dry chain and a parallel chain, and then some sort of echo device. So here we've got this one, which is just the stock standard echo plugin. And then we can start filtering afterwards or before. So we also have the filter in here, yes, but this is actually filtering the input of the echo device. So if I was to boost in around 1K, then 1K is actually going to be accentuated and echoed more. So this is the same thing as if we were to pull the EQ before the echo and then just bring a boost there. So, so just quickly to recap, I've put the EQ device after the echo but I can actually put it before as well. And this is just gonna change what the echo is listening to, what is being echoed. So if I was to put a boost around 1K like this, then there's gonna be a lot of echoes around 1K, more so than everything else. And if I was to put it afterwards, then it's just gonna boost the actual signal of 1K after the echo. So this might be a little bit challenging to wrap your head around, but experiment with both and see how it feels. This is a really cool effect also with reverbs. So if I was to delete this echo device and go grab a reverb, I can actually do the same thing. And this filtered reverb sound is a really common one as well. So remember when we're in parallel, we have to have our parallel chain at 100% wet. Otherwise we're gonna be letting some dry signal through and we have our dry chain especially for that. So we don't need to let any dry signal through and then we can just mix from here. So. so this is the same effect. If I'm down low with the filter over here, you can see there's not many frequencies here that are being reverbed. And as I bring it up, you can hear more frequencies get reverbed. So it's a really cool effect because as you're sweeping through the frequency spectrum, the actual sound and how it's processed is changed as well. It's really interesting to listen to. So finally, to put all of these concepts in action, we're gonna remake the processing that I've done on this pad here. So it sounds like this. If I was to take off the processing, So what is happening here is I have three chains and I'm splitting each one into different frequency bands. So it's multi-band parallel processing. And the high end band is going through some distortion and some reverb. And then the mid band is being echoed and the low band is going through some saturation compression as well. So you can hear the low end band really is quite growly and analog sounding. And then once we move the frequency knob to the mid band, it starts to echo. So we have those echoes in the mid frequencies. And then once we get to the top band, it starts to reverb and has this really sizzly reverby top end. So it makes for a really interesting and full sounding pad. So making again this from scratch, the first thing I'll do is grab my EQ and separate out the low end. So I'm gonna just go into this band four and just maybe move it around and see where my low end sits. 
and bring this frequency up. Maybe somewhere around 270 is good. I'm going to group this and duplicate the chains twice and then call this one low, mid, and high. And then I'm just going to quickly change this mid band, flip this one over, and then grab another one over here and maybe put it around here. So let's have a listen. That sounds good to me. And then actually I'm just gonna copy this go over here, delete this one and paste this one, whoops. And I'm just gonna flip this again. So this one, flip it over. And then now we've got the top end. And it's just that really sizzly top end. And now we can start processing each band differently. So the low end band, I had some saturation distortion on there. So I want that really growly low end sound. So how I achieved that was with a drum bus, but you can really do this in any way you feel. You could add some uh, saturation or distortion on there. I just drove it a little bit, a little bit of crunch, creating that really growly feel. That sounds good. And then in our mid band, I think I did some echoing, didn't I? So let's go find some uh, echo. I could uh, experiment with putting it before or after. Let's just... Maybe I could turn this into a stab so we can hear the echoes a little bit easier. Just gonna put it onto ping pong mode. So when we're doing multiband uh, processing, you don't actually have to have this dry wet knob at 100% anymore because this isn't necessarily parallel processing just for the sake of mixing in echo, but now it's multiband processing. So we can, we can actually leave it on 50% if you want a little bit of that original sound. If you just want echo, then you can put it on 100%, but I'm just going to leave it on 50% for now. Maybe we could add a little bit of overdrive after the echo and that's just going to saturate the echo a little bit and the original sound as well. Let's turn down the dry wet a little bit. Now let's move on to the high band. So I'm going to grab an amp this time. <clears throat> so I've got this amp audio effect here and I've just pulled back the dry wet a bit and changed, tweaked a few of the parameters. And then I'm just going to grab a reverb and put it here as well. And then I'm going to make this reverb just have a, quite a long tail. So that when you play it and stop it, it sounds like this. It has that really nice sizzle and then it sort of fizzles out into the background. And so now we can use these little sliders here to adjust and attenuate how much low, mids, and highs that we want. And this kind of acts as like an EQ as well. So I think the high, highs are a little bit overbearing there. And now as we move this knob here, you'll see that the sound will change and morph. So it sounds really nice when I do a big filter sweep. Because we have that long reverb tail from the top end and the echoes from the mid frequencies, I think it sounds really cool. It'd be a really good use for making a stab with. So if I went into the matrix and uh, assigned this envelope to, to the filter frequency, I'm just gonna make it a bit longer. So it's a really interesting sound because it has a whole bunch of different elements to it.
So if I wanted to, I could go even further and keep parallel processing. I could make a new chain and then just put some effect on here and put it into 100% dry wet and then bring it down and start, you know, parallel processing like this. Or I could just keep going with different effects and there's so many different things that I can experiment with. This really does go to show how much creative potential is here when we start doing multiband and parallel processing. If you've enjoyed the video today, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It does help us to continue creating content for you guys. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.